It happens that in 1988, I got in touch with this uh, group of contact. They are called Rama and I got to the point where I could have the physical encounter with those beings. So I remember the first time I had this encounter, uh, this being uh, emanated this uh, fraternal love. It's not about them coming down to earth so we can have the physical encounter with them. The most important aspect of the contact is to expand consciousness, to realize that not only we are not alone in the universe, but we are not alone within. We are not this tiny little spot in the middle of the universe. Hello, my name is Enrique Villanueva and I'm a hypnotherapist. I like to work with the mind and um, I had experiences uh, with uh, alien beings, with um, intelligence from the outer space. And sometimes I share about it in conferences around the city and California and other states. That's what I do, that's what I like. So when, when did this uh, connection or contact with alien beings begin? It began in the year 1988 for me. Um, I mean officially because before that date in 1977 I had a first sighting when I was seven years old. And um, that sighting was was huge, was big. I have it with all my friends in the block, and then later on I became interested in the in the phenomena of the UFOs. In Peru it was very common. I am natural from Peru, and it happens that in 1988 I got in touch with this uh, group of contact. They are called Rama, and the Rama group started in 1974, and since uh, that time they invited uh, the press, the journalists, to take the videos and pictures of the spaceships when they arrive at the location where they have the sightings. So um, I prepare with them for about six months and then we have a, a group sighting in the middle of the desert, in the Chilca Desert in Peru. And since then I start getting more and more involved with the activities of the group. Uh, practicing the many different modalities of meditation and concentration they practice, uh, become a vegetarian, and do all the stuff I need to do to, to experience the contact in a more deeper way. And I got to the point where I could have the physical encounter with those beings. In two opportunities, I could be in front of them like I am with you and, and talk to them. So when you, when you talk to them, mm -hmm. is it something that do you have things that you particularly focus on when you talk to them, or is it what they offer you? What's your exchange about? It's, it's never the way I, I think it was going to be, or I thought it was going to be, because um, you plan in your head all the questions you have, right? You are so curious about what they do, and when you are in front of them, it's like somehow they have control over the whole situation. The whole scenario is under their um, influence and you feel it from the beginning because uh, as soon as you are in front of them you cannot control this fear this emotion that overcomes you and it's not because of them but because of our natural instinct i think it's a survival mechanism when you notice that that person in no way is from here you feel like running that's an impulse. But then they take control over the situation and it's like something that you cannot see emanates from them, uh, covers you completely, and you just relax. You're like, what happened? And then it begins like an exchange of, of feelings because telepathy is not actually the transmission of thought. It's actually feeling. So you feel what they are saying and immediately your brain as a mechanism of translation begins telling you word by word what is the, the feeling they are giving you. So I remember the first time I had this encounter, uh, this being uh, emanated this uh, fraternal love, this brotherhood, this feeling, and my brain immediately translated that feeling into little brother. And that was the way the whole conversation started. And then it was just like a flow. I could feel also an answer and it was like, give and take and it was beautiful so so when you answer do you also answer through feeling 
Yes, and it's so natural. That's a weird thing that we apparently are not trained in telepathy, right? But once you are with someone that has the ability, you automatically become like them. I, I suspect that humans are natural um, telepathic beings. It's just that we are not in the right frequency or we are not in the right environment to, to trigger that uh, potential we have in us. But when we are in front of them, it's just natural. You, you know how to do it and you just flow with it. And it's, it's great. It's interesting when you say telepathy, I, I feel like you're describing something much more than telepathy. Because when we speak mm -hmm. of telepathy, we tend to think of you know thought, sentences, mm -hmm. or pictures being translated. But what you're describing is like, I don't know what you would call it, kinepathy or you know heart. Like it feels like you're mm -hmm. you're speaking a language that we don't know. You know that. But you actually know. Yes. I would say that is the highest way of communication. I say telepathy just to, to point at the phenomenon, but I, I honestly don't know how to describe that. I just know that it's not just thought, it's feeling. And um, once you are in that state, you just can flow with it and you know exactly how to do it. Mm. So, so now um, in, in, let's say, you know, in the more recent times when they communicate with you, mm -hmm. do you still have that fear reaction or you already now know ahead of time that they're coming to you with an expression of love? When I have the experience in the um, last years, let's say, it was not a physical encounter with them. Mm -hmm. So it was just like kind of a feeling or a voice inside of your whole body. and. That cannot scare you because that voice is talking with your own, with your own voice, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you are talking to yourself. It's only when they told you, just go outside and look at the sky. And you go and see the spaceship and you say, okay, it was not my mind. It was not a trick of my mind. It is real. The contact is still there. So um, normally they are not going to let you just to believe that you are confused or you are imagining something. They are going to let you... Um, have the proof that the communication is there and they are actually um, taking care of the whole scenario of the contact. They say that the, the most important contact is not the contact with them, but the contact within. Mm. Once you reach that level, then the contact with them is a consequence of your preparation. Mm -hmm. So they are always open and waiting for us to reach that level and then they will trigger the experience for you. It's an invitation to expand our consciousness, and they are already here. We don't need ambassadors. Every single human being can be an ambassador. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure you know that there's a lot of people who've been contacted. Do mm. you differentiate between that there's some, some beings who communicate with us who don't necessarily have our best interest in mind, and some, or do you feel that they all have our best interest in mind? And what would be, how would you tell people you know, to be able to discriminate, uh, to know, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't talk about good beings and bad beings. I don't think it's like that in, in, in the space. I, I think more like um, they have their particular interest and some, they, some come here to explore as a scientist let's say an anthropologist who is looking at this weird tribe living in planet Earth. Mm -hmm. So they don't have uh, an interest beyond the one of observation of this habitat and what we do in this space. But there are others that are aware of what is happening at the level of consciousness here. And they feel as brothers of us. So they come with the clear intention of helping us through this uh, transformation that we are living now in, on Earth. So, should we differentiate between uh, interest? Yeah, you are going to feel it. Somehow you know. Is we have already these these things inside of us. This um, I don't know how to call it. Aware mechanism mm -hmm. is there, and if you feel that you are not supposed to be there, uh, naturally you will avoid the situation. And if you are supposed to be there, the images are going to be in your mind with so much clarity that you will know that you have to be there. 
is an invitation they are sending through images, through holographic imagery that you have to follow and you have this feeling that is pulling you. It's like being in love. It's so powerful that you have to go and then you find them and then you can have the exchange with them. In Peru, are people more open to um, this kind of contact experience than in America? Or do you, would you say it's the same or are we catching up? Or um, Peru is considered to be like a hot spot for sightings. Mm -hmm. Like 80% of the territory is considered to be a hot spot. So everywhere you go, you just lift your eyes and you can see something in the sky. So we grew up, kind of, we form ourselves in the experience of sightings and seeing weird stuff in the skies. Now, from there to look for the contact, that's a different animal, completely different experience. I would say that this is happening more and more everywhere in the planet. As we accelerate our um, connection, I think uh, the planet Earth, the whole planet, is becoming a hot spot for contact. So wherever you are, with an open mind, they can create the, the scenario for the contact there. So I'm sure America, North America is becoming a hot spot because I can see all this um, push for the expansion no? everywhere. You see it here in this expo and you see it everywhere in the streets, people just talking about karma and stuff that we, uh, years ago, didn't even have uh, notions of what is that. No? But now it's, it's everywhere and I think they are noticing that. And Maybe Peru has some conditions, some magnetic specifics um, for the location, but here in uh, Mojave Desert, in Joshua Tree, Mount Shasta, so many places that are particularly charged with this special energy, you can have amazing experiences there too. So would you say that um, the general message or the purpose of some of this contact, I heard you saying that it's mostly to help us connect to the fullness and depth of our own hearts. Mm -hmm. I would say that the contact from their point of view uh, has many different levels. We can comprehend just a few of those levels. I think we are becoming to, to understand the more wider aspect of, of their approach. It's like what we perceive from them is not the whole aspect of them. What we perceive from them is what we can perceive from ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay? We are in a way projecting on them. Mm -hmm. But we don't reach the point where we understand that we are more than these physical beings. We are multidimensional beings, and so they are. So their message is that human beings are actually perceiving themselves in limitation, being that we are not in limitation. We we exist in many different uh, dimensions, and they want us to be aware of uh, that realm where we also exist. So in the beginning of the experience of contact in Peru, they mentioned that the whole humankind is going to enter a different dimension of consciousness, not just a physical dimension, but a dimension of consciousness. And they invite us to experience that. At the point, we didn't care. We just wanted to have the sightings and go inside the ships and have the interview with them. but. In time, we realized that that was the more important aspect of the contact, to experience that, because it's not about them coming down to Earth so we can have the physical encounter with them. The most important aspect of the contact is to expand consciousness, to realize that not only we are not alone in the universe, but we are not alone within. We are not this tiny little spot in the middle of the universe. We are so huge, so big. We are just the whole universe compressed somehow in this particle we are. And once you experience that, once you reach that level of consciousness, then you realize that you cannot just leave this planet and be saved by an alien civilization. You are here in service for the rest of us. You are here to serve your fellow brothers and sisters in this plane. I think that's what they want us to, to live. Since you've had the contact, how would you say that your, your daily, everyday life, how has it directly affected how you live your life and 
your relationships, you know, with your family, with your friends, uh, mm -hmm. and with yourself. In other words, it's something that obviously it has affected you, but I want to know mm -hmm. specifically from where you were, you know, when you were just a hypnotherapist, yeah. and now you're doing a lot more. So what ha what's changed for you? Uh, lots of things changed after the contact, definitely. Um, I would say that I talk about these topics when I'm in a conference mm -hmm. or with people that is interested in the in this area, but uh, with most of the people out there, no. Maybe I would talk about the, the message, but not about the experience of contact. Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing is not the messenger, but the message itself. So that's what I do in my daily life, just talk about how we are one, how we have these consciousness that it can expand and, and about aliens only in the case somebody asks about it. Then I open about the experiences and what happened and, and why they are here and why they are not coming massively descending on Earth and stuff like that. So, so your um, understanding that I feel you have of oneness, is that something that came to you directly through them or is it something that you found yourself experiencing because of your contact with them? They suggest that that state of consciousness existed and I was not looking for it. I actually quit the experience of contact at some point and when I quit the experience I was very absolutely honest because I thought I was not getting what I was looking for through the experience of contact. And I decided to be just uh, any other human being, just lose myself in the multitude and be just me. And then it happened that that state of, a state of consciousness took me. So at the moment I stopped looking for it, it found me. And then it grew from, from within. And, and then I realized what I, what I am and, and what we are. Not just me, but every, every single being was this amazing light and, and that changed your perception of reality forever. So they announced the experience, but when that happened, they didn't even approach me. They let me be and just look at me like in amazement and, and I was amazed too, yeah. So how do you define challenges in your in your not just in your outer life but internally do you come up against things that that make you sometimes just go like <laughs> uh, people can call you crazy when you talk about these topics mm -hmm. um, you get used to that I mean it doesn't bother me anymore because for me it's not a matter of belief or not belief once you have experienced that for you is certainty that's all it is it's like uh, someone talked to me about Hawaii and I haven't been in Hawaii. So I believe it's great, right? <laughs> but I haven't been there. But once you visit Hawaii, it's a completely different thing. So I've seen the ships. I have this conversation with those beings. So for me, it's not a matter of belief anymore. And they can say whatever they want to say. And I respect their position. They have the right to believe that because they did not have the experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in the future they will have the opportunity. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to, that you feel is really, really important that you want to get across, especially to really young people? Yeah. I, I would say don't get afraid. This overstimulation is a part of the process. And um, this expansion is going to come for everybody. It's going to happen globally. and. I'm sure that whatever they are experiencing now is preparing them for that stage. Um, nobody is going to be exempt of this experience. It's going to happen and it's already happening. We don't have to wait for 2012 to happen. So I would say don't fear. Just open yourself to experience unlimited uh, expansion because that's like recognizing what you really are. Just thank you and thank Neil and I hope um, this uh, experience can uh, guide someone that is looking for experiences similar to, to mine and um, I hope to continue spreading the word about this because there is nothing to fear 
uh, about aliens visiting us. It's just people, it's just brothers and sisters that are very interested in our uh, development as a species. And, and it's great that they are looking at us. Thank you.